My name is Dr. Raoul McLaughlin, and my subject is the Roman economy, including trade beyond the imperial frontiers. I have published several books on this subject. I am a member of the Council of the Classical Association of Northern Ireland. The question is, how did Palmyra rise to power? The ruins of ancient Palmyra stand in the Syrian desert as a rubble of collapsed stonework. Lines of broken classical columns mark where broad avenues led through the ancient city to large market squares fronted by temples and monumental administrative buildings decorated with marble sculptures. Civic authorities and caravan merchants erected statues and dedications to individuals who had performed some noteworthy service, and some of these survived on ancient stone edifices. The inscriptions are written in a local form of Aramaic called Palmarine, but many are duplicated in Greek, so that Hellenic travellers visiting Palmyra could understand the text. Over 30 of these inscriptions commemorate individuals who assisted merchants on their caravan ventures into Babylonia, and these texts reveal important details about the organisation and destinations of Palmarine trade ventures. These business networks were wide-ranging across the Roman Empire. A second-century funeral sculpture found at South Shields near Hadrian's Wall depicts a seated palmarine matron dressed in fine fabrics, holding a textile spindle and gesturing to an open box of jewellery by her side. She was British by birth, and the accompanying inscriptions in Latin and palmarine read to the spirits of the departed, and Regina, freedwoman and wife of the Palmarine Barates, born a Catovoelian, and died aged thirty. Barates was a Syrian merchant who had married a freed slave woman from a native British community near the commercial city of Londinium, London, at nearby Coria, Corbridge. A memorial inscription commemorating Barates was found. It reads, To the spirits and the departed Palmarine Barates, a Vexillarius lived sixty-eight years. The term Vexillarius indicates that Barates was a supplier of Vexilla, flags, standards and ensigns, made from silk or fitted with silk tassels and trimmings. Both inscriptions confirm the existence of a Syrian commercial network, conveying imported Chinese silk as far as the western frontiers of the Roman Empire. The oasis city of Palmyra held a unique position in the Syrian desert between the empires of Rome and the Parthian Empire which ruled Persia. The city was unusual because it occupied an outlying location separated from other Syrian cities by a wide expanse of desert. It therefore maintained a high level of independence, and its citizens were able to claim protection and assistance from both the Roman and Parthian regimes. The local authorities in Palmyra raised and equipped their own regional troops to protect their territory from bandits and keep control over desert trails leading to their city. This allowed Palmyra to develop into a major centre for caravan trade, passing from Babylonia and the Persian Gulf to Syria and the Mediterranean seaboard. Ancient Palmyra appears in the Old Testament as Tadmor, from the Semitic word Tamor, meaning palm tree. King Solomon established an outpost there at Tadmor in the wilderness, but it was soon reclaimed by the local population. By the Hellenic era, the Palmarines spoke a distinct Semitic dialect related to Arabic and Hebrew, but the earliest Palmarine inscriptions used Greek terminology. Their government was managed by a council of appointed leaders, a boule, presiding over a citizen body, the demos, assembled to receive instruction or approve political measures. Early Palmyra was surrounded by oasis field systems that irrigated a broad stretch of land in the midst of the Syrian desert. The Roman writer Pliny the Elder reports, 
Palmyra is a city famous for its location, for its rich soil, and for its ample springs. Its fields are surrounded on every side by a vast circuit of sand, so that nature has isolated this place from the rest of the world. Ruins indicate the size the city attained during the height of its prosperity, with boundary walls encompassing an area almost as large as the Syrian city of Apamea. According to Roman census reports, Apamea had 117,000 adult citizens. The first engagements between Rome and the Palmyrenes occurred when the Roman general Mark Antony prepared to invade the Parthian Empire in 41 BC. Antony sent a cavalry force into the desert to capture Palmyra, but the inhabitants received advance warning of the attack and fled across the Euphrates River to seek protection from the Parthian Empire. When Antony's campaign ended in failure, the Palmyrenes reoccupied their oasis community and regained control over the surrounding desert. The Emperor Augustus brought security to the Roman Mediterranean by ending decades of civil war and concluding peace terms with the Parthian superpower dominating Iraq and Iran. The Romans strengthened their control over Syria by posting a legion at the frontier outpost of Zugama on the upper Euphrates. But Palmyra was not garrisoned, and the city was permitted regional autonomy under Roman protection. By this period, the Syrian capital Antioch was the third largest city in the Roman Mediterranean, with a population of up to 400,000 people. Neighbouring Babylonia was dominated by the cities of Seleucia Sesiphon on the banks of the Tigris River. The walled Hellenic city of Seleucia was founded by the Seleucid regime in 305 BC to replace ancient Babylon as the regional capital. By the Parthian period, the city had a population of 600,000 people, including large Greek, Babylonian and Jewish communities. On the opposite bank of the Tigris River was the western capital of the Parthian Empire, the royal city of Sesiphon. Sesiphon was a major administrative centre with a population of more than a hundred thousand people. The combined population of these enormous cities concentrated demand and offered substantial business opportunities. Greek and Roman wines could be traded for dates and figs and Mediterranean slaves were exchanged for their eastern counterparts. Roman merchants visiting Seleucia also acquired Arabian incense and Indian spices from Persian Gulf trade routes, along with Oriental silks imported by Iranian caravans. During the Augustan era, most Greek and Syrian merchants crossed into Parthian territory near Zugama then travelled south by caravan between the Euphrates and the Tigris rivers. This trade route crossed dry and difficult terrain to avoid the numerous tolls and taxes imposed by the many urban communities who controlled the river valleys. The Greek geographer Strabo makes no mention of Palmyra as an important caravan city, but Palmyrene merchants were gaining significance in the overland trade routes between Syria and Babylonia. During this era, the first in a series of monumental buildings was constructed in Palmyra, partly funded by the commercial wealth acquired from eastern trade ventures. Construction of a vast temple devoted to the Babylonian god Bel began in AD 19 with donations from the Palmyrene and Greek merchants from Seleucia. Another dedication dated to AD 24 honours a citizen named Hassas, who gave money to the new temple on behalf of Palmyrene merchants in Babylon. During this period, Palmyra was considered part of Roman Syria, but its civic council was permitted exceptional regional autonomy. In particular, Palmyrenes could manage their own political arrangements with the Parthian regime, 
and negotiate deals with communities in Babylonia. Pliny the Elder indicates the attitude of Roman government in the first century AD when he explains, Palmyra has its own fate between the mighty Roman and Parthian empires, so any discord between these two regimes will cause them immediate concern. Roman commanders had the authority to intervene in Palmyrene affairs, but their interests were limited and periodic. For example, one Roman governor installed small stone border markers to define the limits of Palmyrene territory, and the imperial commander Germanicus included Palmyra when he issued new tax regulations to the cities of Syria in AD 18. Palmyra was significant because it offered a direct caravan route from Syria to the Mid-Euphrates, which flowed downstream to Babylon. Merchants making this route could also cross to Seleucia and follow the Tigris River south to where it joined with the Euphrates. The converging rivers flowed past the sea port of Spasnu Charax, in the small subject kingdom of Charasene, at the head of the Persian Gulf. An inscription dated AD 71 provides the first mention of palmarine operations at Spasnu Charax. This trade route covered 600 miles and represented a journey of at least 40 days for caravans. Spasnu Charax was the main port for receiving incoming Indian and Arabian products destined for Babylonia. In AD 50, a Greek merchant from Alexandria wrote an account of Roman trade in the Indian Ocean called the Periplus of the Ithraean Sea. He describes how large Indian craft brought shipbuilding materials to ports in the Persian Gulf, including teak wood beams and copper used for rust-resistant metal fittings. Persian ships also sailed from Spasno Charax to trade ports in northwest India. When the Roman Emperor Hadrian visited Palmyra in AD, AD 129, he bestowed political privileges on the ruling council, and the city was formally renamed as Hadriane Palmyra in commemoration. Two years later, the Parthian king, Volgesis III, seized direct authority over the Gulf Kingdom of Charasene and installed one of his own sons named Meridetes as ruler. Meridates offered Palmyrene merchants privileged positions within his new kingdom and extended his authority into the Persian Gulf. Agreements between King Meridates and the Palmyrene Council gave Charasene associates an access route to Roman markets and a means to mutually enrich both territories. In AD 132, Palmyrene merchants from Spasno Charax paid for the erection of a statue in their home city, honouring a colleague named Yahai, who King Meridates had made satrap, governor of the island of Tylos. Tylos, modern Bahrain, lay off the Arabian coast about 300 miles south of Spasno Charax, with good harbours and valuable pearl fisheries. Another inscription dated to AD 140, records how a Palmyrene was appointed as Archon in the kingdom of Charasene. This was a high-status administrative office, only superseded by the authority of King Meridatis. The new Archon provided special assistance to merchants from his home city, and a caravan inscription confirms, the Archon of Charasene is honoured for having favoured his native city and its merchants. The Palmarines also gained trade interests in a newly established Parthian royal city called Volagasis. Volagasis was located south of Babylon with excellent river connections to the seaport of Spasno Charax. A dedication from AD 150 records how the Palmarine Council and Assembly honoured a citizen who helped finance the construction of a temple dedicated to Roman emperors in Vologesis. The 
The Parthians probably approved the building in the interest of promoting reconciliation and encouraging commerce. The inscription records how Suetos, son of Boliades, established and dedicated in Bologesis a temple of the Augusti. Writing in this period, Appian reports, The Palmarines are merchants who bring the products of India and Arabia from Persia into Roman territory. Palmarine caravans carried pearls, silks, incense and spices to cities in Roman Syria. Evidence of this commerce is revealed by sculptures that show rich matrons wearing finely woven fabrics and lavish pearl and gem encrusted jewellery. Remains of silk have been found in the ruins of tomb towers, suggesting that these ladies dressed in imported oriental fabrics. Caravans exported woolen fabrics, reworked silks, purple cloth, wine stored in skin flasks, perfumes, ointment, decorative tableware, coloured glass, red coral, Mediterranean slaves, and batches of gold and silver Roman coinage. The Syrian city of Palmyra held a strategic position on the caravan networks that connected the Chinese, Persian, and Roman empires. One section of the Silk Routes channeled goods from Iran and the Persian Gulf across the eastern frontiers of the Roman Empire. These commercial contacts generated monumental wealth for Palmyra and allowed this caravan city to assume a leading role in international affairs. But how did the citizens of this desert oasis profit from the wealth that trafficked along their caravan trails? For information on the development of this trade, please see part two of this discussion. How did ancient Palmyra organize its commerce? For further information, follow the links to my books, The Roman Empire and the Indian Ocean, and The Roman Empire and the Silk Routes. Thank you.